you. You're the star now. My grouchy old man. Oh, hello, friends. It's me, Ginny D, cosplayer, YouTuber, tabletop gaming geek. I thought I would reintroduce myself in case you didn't recognize me without my signature blue locks. For the last few years, I have been going green in the fall and winter solely for seasonal color scheme reasons. Right now, these are the leaves on the top of the pumpkin. Anyway, it's Halloween season, which means it's time for spooky stuff. And what is spookier than a 10 foot by 10 foot cube of carnivorous ooze? The gelatinous cube is arguably one of the most iconic monsters in the world of D&D. And full disclosure, making a gelatinous cube costume was not my idea. There is a person on Twitter who a few months ago began replying to all of my tweets suggesting that I cosplay a gelatinous cube. I have no idea what inspired this. I don't know who this person is. Like they have changed their display picture and their username and all of that to match their mission. I think they wanted like an actual cube, but the more that I thought about the idea, the more I fell in love with the idea of like a gelatinous cube themed party dress. So I hope this is still satisfying to them. Accept me cube person. They stopped tweeting at me in early September, so I hope that they're okay. In order to really nail down my concept for this dress, I went ahead and put together a sketch. Overall, it's a pretty simple design. I wanted a big full skirt to give me plenty of room to put in skeletons and bones and little items. And then I wanted puff sleeves for the same reason because a puff sleeve has a lot of space in it to hide little props. And of course my newly greened hair will make a great match for this so I won't even have to wear a wig. I also haven't done like a sewing build log on this channel in a really long time. So hopefully you enjoy it and uh, let's dive into this gelatinous cube. <laughs> Sounds dangerous. Oh my gosh, you know what makes me hungry? Sponsorship. Let's prepare a thematically relevant snack while I tell you all about Skillshare, who sponsored this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on tons of topics for learners of every skill level. So far, I've taken classes on sewing and draping, photography, marketing, project management, and even a class on interior decorating that mostly just made me feel real bad about the ugly inside of my own apartment. If you want to be able to make weird stuff, like a gelatinous cube dress, then you might benefit from the Introduction to Garment Construction class taught by Joshua McKinley of Project Runway fame. Oh no! This was supposed to be the part where I had cute little gelatinous cube jellos. Absolute carnage. The cube has been defeated, 450 XP for everyone. Anyway, it's an easy to follow one hour class that covers the basics and even taught me three new kinds of seams. Skillshare costs less than $10 a month and the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. This is so depressing. I went through two packets of Jell-O for this and I don't even like Jell-O. So I had already gotten started on this costume before I decided to document it, but I haven't gotten far. Gelatinous cubes are of course semi-transparent, but I must remain decent. I started by patterning a quick sheath dress just based on another dress that I have, and I created just a muslin underdress with a zipper up the back to serve as a base for the dress. By the way, if you want to know how to pattern something based on existing clothing out of your closet, I have a video all about that and I will put it into the cards. Okay, I'm gonna start by making a bunch of tiny little items to go inside of the layers of the dress. So I'm gonna make some little weapons, hopefully a little chest with some jewels in it and stuff. We'll see. We'll see what I'm capable of constructing. Okay, so I've finished all the pieces that are gonna go inside the dress. I made a bunch of tiny little weapon props. Look at these baby arrows. This was a lot of fun. Maybe I should just have a dollhouse instead of doing cosplay. My little spear, tiny keys on a tiny key ring. 
I also bought a bunch of little bones and little skulls and one entire skeleton that I'll probably break up and use in pieces. Fully poseable. What a waste. So yeah, I guess the next step is to start piecing together the actual dress, don't you think? So my plan is to make the entire dress lined with itself and then I will attach that to the sheath base. That'll give me two layers of the green vinyl to put the little props in between. Basically, I'm gonna assemble a dress, but I have to affix these to the lining layer first before it is assembled. I've made like a lot of circle skirts and a lot of puff sleeves and a lot of basic bodices, so I don't imagine the patterning of this dress being a problem. I think probably the biggest concern would just be that I'm not used to working with vinyl like this. It's just a strange material, you know, it's plastic. It arrived coated in powder to just make sure it doesn't stick to itself. I'll have to wipe all of that down before I finalize any seams. I also have a non-stick foot for my machine that I think will make a big difference. Let's get to sewing. Hello, welcome to day two. The scariest part about yesterday was just not knowing if my concept was gonna actually work. I've never worked with material like this before and I didn't know if my little props were gonna look good through the layers or suspended there or if the whole skirt was gonna hang right. I had a lot of concerns, but in the end, I'm actually really happy with how it looks. The skirt took basically all day, but a huge chunk of that was just getting all of the little inclusions sewn down to the base layer because I hand sewed all of them. I was originally gonna glue them and Josh was like, does that seem like it will be secure enough? Because like it would suck if you sewed it all up and then they started falling off. And I was like, you're right, but that means like three more hours of work. So I'm sewing it all on now, which I think is the right move. Although in terms of longevity, I'm not sure how long this dress is gonna last because some of the bones I've sewn in here are candy, but they're like hard candy. That shit doesn't expire. Anyway, today should be pretty straightforward because I'm gonna use the same bodice pattern that I used to sew the sheath dress underneath so I don't have to pattern anything. I'm just gonna make the bodice and a little Peter Pan collar and some puff sleeves, all things that I've made before. I mean, I don't wanna jinx myself, but I just, I think it should be pretty straightforward. <laughs> anyway, lots to do, lots more hand sewing to go, so I guess I'm gonna get started on that. Okay, I've got all the pieces sewn onto the bodice, much quicker than the skirt, thankfully. Now I'm just gonna take my second layer and I'm going to tack it over top of this one so that I can then apply the Peter Pan collar and the puff sleeves.
Okay, I'm at about the point where I think it would be best to attach all of the green stuff to the sheath dress underneath. So I'll sew this waist seam first and then I will attach all of it to the sheath dress. So that way there's already a zipper installed in the sheath dress. So I won't have to install a zipper into this vinyl. But honestly, this is going really well so far. It's only, it's not even two o'clock yet. So I think I'll be able to get this dress done today. Overall, the fabric is definitely unwieldy. It can be difficult to manipulate around the sewing machine and really fiddly spots like the armholes are more difficult. In fact, I'm a little bit worried about getting the sleeves on. I guess worst case scenario, I would sew them on by hand, but that would be a pretty bad case. Plus the presence of like long, solid things like bones in the garments have made them at times difficult to turn inside out or shape around the sewing machine. But I've figured it out so far, so hopefully I'll continue to be able to figure it out through the end. starting to get to the point where it's a huge pain to get it onto the dress form, so it's not really on right now. I just got the Peter Pan collar on. I have affixed the vinyl to the sheath dress, so it's structurally ready. All that's left now for the dress is the puff sleeves. I'm going to use the puff sleeve pattern from Simplicity 9006. I used this pattern for my Nurse Joy dress, so I've already used it. I know it fits me well. I know that it's easy. I don't think it's crazy to expect to be done by maybe six, which would leave me plenty of time to get it all on and shoot it tonight. Quick update, my estimate that I would be done with everything by six, not accurate. It is 6.30, I have cuffed one sleeve, I'm about to cuff the second, then they will have to be added to the dress, but I am determined to put on this costume and shoot photos tonight. So if that has to happen at 10 p.m., so be it. Okay, I have the sleeves pinned in and now I'm gonna sew them in. I think this is the hardest part of the entire dress and it is also the last step. Okay. Everything is done. I'm going to attempt 
a 50s-esque style on my hair and do some makeup and worm my way into this creaking, completely unstretchable dress. And then I'll show you what we made together. I sewed for 11 hours today. Too many. Easily the squeakiest dress I've ever worn. It's a little hard to get on. I think I need to add some kind of like binding inside the sleeve because right now the seam around the sleeve is just like really chafing the arm. And yes, pretty sweaty, but I'm really happy with how it looks. It is super duper cute. By the way, if you like this gelatinous cutie, she's gonna be the centerfold poster in my 2021 pinup calendar, which is, drum roll please, Tabletop gaming themed. <coughs> Excuse me. Pre-orders will be live on November 1st. If you wanna make sure that you don't miss it, you can sign up to be emailed when they go live. I will put the link in the description to sign up for the email list. And of course, I'll release a video to announce it also. If you're not familiar with my annual pinup calendars, it's just a cute little wall calendar featuring 50 style cosplay pinup photos. I'm glad that's done. I will see you next week for my second POV role-playing character builder. Thanks for watching, make sure to like, share, comment, subscribe. I'm gonna go to sleep now.